Keith Collier, and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present, and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. On Slice 12 this week, we meet three absolute legends from Chris Erlaw and Kevin Camogie. I had the chats with the brilliant Kira Finnegan, Lauren Ellis, and Neve Riley. We each had everything from my terrible mispronunciation of the club's name, Kira's bus trip to Whitehall in Dublin, the influence of Neve's mother on the girls in the club, Lauren's favourite red helmet, the arrival of Westmead man Johnny Gravel to the county, feeding drink to a stuffed duck in a pub, Mark and the likes of Roisin O'Keefe, Lauren's luck in radio competitions, and a surprising answer to who Kira believes is the toughest person she has ever marked. That and a whole lot more to come. Don't miss the crack with these ladies. They're a credit to the GA, their county and to storytelling. But first, as always, let's take our usual trip through the girls' area of Chrysler and through County Cavan. Bon Soltos. This week we move back up through Longford to the second Lake County of Ireland after Westmead, County Cavan. Indeed, we just crossed the border of Longford past Loch Sheila into the area of Kilnalek and the home of Chrysler GA. County Cavan borders six counties and was originally part of the Kingdom of Brefna and remains known as the Brefni County. As at Longford last week, Cavan was also once part of the province of Connacht until Queen Elizabeth I changed that in 1584, where they became part of Ulster. Then under King James about 30 years later, plantation areas like Coote Hill in Virginia appeared, with English settlers bringing new farming methods to help the area. Cavan also suffered heavily during the famine with disease taking many lives. In modern days, Cavan is known as the Lake County, the same as my own home in Westmead. The county boasts several landmarks for visitors, some of which are shared with neighbouring Fermanagh. One of these is the world famous Marble Arch Geopark, home to things like the Shannon Pot, the famed source of the River Shannon, the Marble Arch Caves themselves, and monastic sites such as Devonish Island and Bow Island. Nearby Drum Lane Abbey and Round Tower date back to 555 AD and are also part of the Geopark. The abbey is associated with St. Colum Kill in St. Moog. Today many visit one of Ireland's top retreats in Farnham Estate. The Farnham family name traces back several centuries in Cavan to Baron Farnham. However, the titles died out slowly due to families having no children, while a series of issues and accidents also were involved, such as the death of Lord Farnham in a train crash in Wales. Today one of the main streets of Cavan is known as Farnham Street. Cavan itself is the hollow on Cavan, where Cavan Town is its main location. It was the O'Reilly family who were responsible for the town's foundation in the early 14th century. Around a century or so later, bearded Owen O'Reilly had another castle built in the area and worked to bring in traders and investment from Dublin and the larger growing areas. The phrase, Life of Riley, supposedly comes from his excessive wealth enjoyed as a young O'Reilly member and by his family. On the GA field, Cavan GA have won the All-Ireland Senior Men's title a total of five times, but on a more local level, Ballyconnell can boast having the first established club in the province of Ulster. This was Ballyconnell Joe Biggers, named in honour of MP Joe Bigger, around the year 1885. They would then become the Ballyconnell First Ulsters. Their chairman was, of course, Anne O'Reilly, Thomas O'Reilly. The club would take on another newly formed club at the time in Mahara McFinns in the first county final in 1887. The game was 21 players aside. The newspaper described the first Ulcers as handsomely rigged out, but are much less complimentary of their opponents. McFinns, coming from the area of Farta, the place of the graves as it's known, took victory by 1-4 to a point. Bailey Borough Home Rulers and Muller Brefnians, the second and third clubs in the county, showed the history was very much alive in the names. Cavan GA won their five titles within two decades, showing their presence at the time. This wasn't before they tried a different tactic though. In 1917, Cavan proposed creating a new county team, comprising a selection of players from themselves, Longford, Westmeath, Meath and Loud. Needless to say, it was rejected. Can't blame them for trying, I suppose. In 1933, they stopped Kerry's five in a row drive before beating Galway in the final. Two years later, they took down the Lily Whites in the final. The wait for number three would be around 12 years before winning the famous Polo Grounds final in New York in 1947. The game marked the centenary of the Irish famine. 
Cavan flew to New York via the Azores Islands. Kerry went by the longer, cheaper route of the sea. And yet Cavan people get abused for being tight, eh? Mick Higgins, a Mount Nugent man and three-time All-Ireland winner, died in 2010, the last surviving member of the Cavan 1947 Polo Grounds team. As if the 47 final wasn't enough, the 48 final against Mayo was insane for other reasons. Cavan led by 3-2 to no score at half-time due to an extraordinary wind. In the end they won by a solitary point, 4-5 to 4-4. Four, four. In 1952, the last of their five came via a replay against Meath and a scoring masterclass of freeze by that man, Mick Higgins. In ladies football, the Cavan seniors won the All-Ireland in 1977, beating Roscommon before losing finals in 1980 and 1981. They would not see an All-Ireland final again until the intermediate in 2011, but sadly for them, the Mary Quinn Cup would go to my own county of Westmeath. The Westmead setup involved last week's guest, current LGFA Leinster president Trina Murray. However, for Cavan, victory in 2013 over Tipperary made up for some of the defeats over the years. On the Hurling and Camogie side, the county is not predominantly known for the small ball in history, mostly because it was not encouraged in the past by the powers that be. Cavan slashers dominated in the early 20th century, in between periods of huge decline and even non existence of hurling in the county. Ironically, it was the events of the Troubles in Northern Ireland that brought soldiers to the Cavan border and revitalised hurling levels, including a junior Ulster title for the county in 1983 and again in 1985. National titles in 1940 and 41 were the major camogie accolades for Cavan before the decline, similar to hurling. Victory in the Moore and the Canada Cup in 2009 sparked some revival for the game. In 2020, Cavan Camogie claimed the Nancy Murray Cup beating Tyrone. Today it continues to grow. Among those behind the revival, Crisherlaw, home to Kira, Neve, and Lauren. Crisherlaw GA was founded in 1903 and are the current Cavan Senior Men's Champions. On the Camogie field, that Nancy Murray winning Cavan team contained no fewer than 11 Crisherlaw players. Lauren would open the scoring in that final with a goal. The club achieved the incredible five in a row last year. In Ulster, the competition is much stiffer and the regular teams tend to emerge. Lochiel Shamrocks are perhaps the most notable and ended their Crisher Law campaign in 2019. But Crisher Law wouldn't trade victory here for the scenes in 2018 when they defeated their rivals in the Ulster final. The game was nip and tuck the whole way. Kira Finnegan, playing sweeper with 13 on her back, decided to make a change herself and the rest, as they say, is history. We'll let Kira tell that story herself in a few minutes. Neve, Kira, and Lauren have nothing to prove in Camogie. They have given and continue to give their all to their club and county. It is the likes of Crisher Law and others who are putting Cavan back on the map in the GA circles, combined with the likes of men's football All Ireland stars Raymond Galligan and cousin Thomas Galligan, alongside the great fullback Porrick Faulkner. So let's meet the legends themselves. This is a chat you don't want to miss. If you want to be in good form, just sit back and enjoy as we meet Crisher Law and Cavan stars. Kira Finnegan, Neve Riley, and Lauren Ellis. Well, Neve, how are you? I'm not too bad in yourself. I'm not sure I'm all right. Good, good. Lauren, how are you getting on? Hello, how are you? I'm not too bad. How's all up in Cavan? Great, not too bad. And uh, how's all up in, I'm pronouncing it right, am I? Cross or lock, is that? What? Well, we can we <laughs> say it like Chris or law. Chris but... law. But people can't really pronounce unless you're from. Cavan people can't really pronounce it, so don't worry. Uh, you... People in Krishalaw they can't say it right either, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's Krish Krishalaw, is that right? Krishalaw, yeah. Krishalaw, all right. No, because I have a few friends up in Cavan, and uh, one of the girls used to teach me. She used to commute from Cavan every day, and uh, yeah. And where is she from? Uh, Swan Lumbar. All oh, right. Jesus, yeah. That's that's not really Cavan at all. No, that's, that's what <laughs> I said to her. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't know too many from up that end. Well, Kira. Here's the shy talker now. <coughs> last, last, last of training, you know what that means. There's 20 laps at the end of this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like me to be late anyway. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah, no, look, uh, Neve was saying, Neve is very nervous anyway, she's been saying it. I don't know about, about yourself and Lauren, but Neve, Neve is shitting a brick up in the corner there, so uh, <laughs> I'm just going to ask her all the questions, and uh, 
Do we? <laughs> Me and Lauren don't say a word. Yeah. So this is the only time you'll get here quiet. Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right, fair enough. Is, Give her a good uh, chance to talk about herself. Is one of you, am I, am I mixing you up? Is one of you going out with Ree and Brady, or is that, am I mixing you up? <laughs> <laughs> I had three at Longford. My cousin, is, <laughs> my cousin plays with Rian. So uh, I yeah, had three at Longford uh, like, the other night. Yeah. And uh, he was, he, afterwards he texted me, he was like, who else be coming on the next week or so? And I, I went through the list and he was like, oh, Calvin, come on. What's, who's the Calvin Camogie girls? And I went, I named them out and he went, I think Lauren goes out with Rian Brady. And I, I've never met Rian, but uh, Daryl was just saying, <laughs> I was, I had to mention that. He said I had to mention it. There so, you go. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, my aim was to kind of hit as many clubs and counties and GA clubs around the yeah. world as well. So um, I've met a good few GA clubs. the best there. one here with us, so don't worry about that now. <laughs> yeah, as long as I've... I've forgotten how to pronounce it. Uh, oh. <laughs> what, did you, what did you tell me? <clears throat> Krishala. Krishala, okay. I definitely won't remember uh, It that. doesn't matter what way you say it, don't worry. I'll, I'll apologise. Everyone says it wrong, we won't worry about that. Krishala, <laughs> Krishala. Chris Law, Chris Law, okay. Um, yeah, Kira was saying to the to Neve and Lauren that uh, the West Me girls come on and they spend more time arguing over the fights outside of chippers <laughs> and stealing flower pots <laughs> and bringing them into nightclubs. That uh, yeah, there's a couple of questions about whether they were coming. We don't have too many fights outside <laughs> chippers now. As long as Neve gets her chicken burger or cheeseburger, she's all right. Okay, here's that pen in your hand. That was a no throw down, fidget, dear. I fit you with everything. It was just beside <laughs> me. So. He has notes written down in case I get anything wrong here. She'd be like, no, that's, yeah. not, that's not what I did. I actually won this instead. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the way, uh, the way I start with everyone is uh, asking them where their their influences were to get into the GA locally or otherwise. So, uh, Neve, where were, who or where were yours? <laughs> Um, I'd say both my parents would have had um, a massive influence, but particularly mum. Uh, she trained me uh, from primary school right up. She done the, we done indoor camogie as well, and she done that. And then when I finished primary school, she trained me right up until minor. So I'd say from the minute it was possible, I probably had a stick in my hand and I have a sister that's, She's two years older than me, so I'd say from, you know, the way she would have been playing them two yeah. years ahead of me, so I'd say I was just dragged to all of her stuff as well. But, um, yeah, she would have had a massive influence. I don't think I would have had a choice. And more than two girls, they had no choice. We had to play, and that was it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah as well as uh, mom, yeah, from the first few years, and then... George Bagnell as well. I'd have to give him a mention. He trained us along with Mam um, for some of our like under sixteen and minor years. And I suppose we were just so lucky. Like we were blessed. We had a group of us that kind of stuck together from like under twelve, kind of up. And we we're so lucky. Like we had great success in all them years as well. And we have such a good bond between all of us. Like we we're just kind of. We call ourselves, we have a group chat. <laughs> <laughs> but we, like, uh, we do just kind of be giving out about everything in this bush. Right. Um, it's kind of the younger, we're kind of the younger group, like, on the team. Um, but, yeah, I'd say George and Mam for Camogie, yeah, they would have had the biggest influence now on me. Deadly, yes. Yeah. Laura, what about you? You were better out the door as well, were you? Uh, well, mine's probably Neo's mom as well, definitely, because like from you did beat you out the door. <laughs> yeah, like as far back as I can remember, like even walking down the school lane in primary school, like getting into the car with Neo to go to all the games. Um, I remember like the older you got, then I was just actually just lazy and um. <laughs> Like she just wouldn't be long about she wouldn't be long about like giving you a text or ring or even landing sometimes and just kind of be like okay. So as many days we had to land so, at Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so definitely her, yeah, um, big time. I just never got away with anything um, handy. She was always always there giving me the boots. So yeah, 
definitely extraneous. I for think me. what made Lauren's day playing camogie was we had this bag of helmets at school, <laughs> and Lauren used to always fight to get this red <laughs> helmet for some reason. And mom let her keep it, so I think that's what made Lauren's My day. Reward. <laughs> Fair enough. That that's was the bribe. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, there's a uh, poor Lauren's getting the brunt of this already before we've even <laughs> into it. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, Kira, what about you? Um, well, yeah, I played a bit of indoor camogie. It was George and Katrina as well, and he was mom, got me kind of into indoor camogie. Um, I had an older sister as well, so I was dragged along. Anywhere she went, I kind of tagged along pretty much everywhere with her. <laughs> and then I kind of quit camogie after a few years. I quit the indoor, and I didn't really play outdoor camogie. But then my sister, Anya, she went back into playing it, and she played a year. And I kind of got jealous of her being there and like coming home with all these funny stories of the girls with treading and that kind of crack. So I went back anyway when I was 13 to play outdoor Kogi. And I remember my first year of Kogi cutting hold of her right. And Katrina Bird nearly killed me. Every you still time can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poking hold of her right and all this kind of crack. She fed it into me to hold it right and I remember I played full back like I couldn't do a thing only catch the ball and I'd kick it out the field like I couldn't do a thing but yeah it was definitely straight aboard kept me at it anyway like mommy would have had an influence definitely on me when it comes to football and um, daddy claims he does but not so much he drove me to the <laughs> What I've learned so far is that uh, there's three of you on here and I should have should have got Neve's mother on as well is basically what, <laughs> what I've learned so far. So I think I, I think I should have invited her on to uh to, to source you on. Yeah, and fairness she was great. Nice to feel uh, yeah. What would uh I'm gonna have a go pronouncing it? What would uh cross oh, Jesus Chris or law? Chris or law, Chris Law, Chris or law. <laughs> What's Chris or Law famous for? Is it famous for anything in general? It's somewhere between Bally James Duff and Loch Sheelan. That's all I know about. <laughs> um, they're famous for winning seven in a row. Right. They're, I think, now I could be wrong. I think they're the only club in Ulster to have seven in a row or else them and Cross McGlenn. Right. Um, the one, that's the men won seven in a row and why everyone doesn't like us. <laughs> Our team is actually heading for six. We're heading for six championships. Yeah, we won really? five in a row last year, so we did. So and you think hopefully we'll that, get playing championship this year. And do you think between that and like the Cavan men getting the All Stars and all that is Cavan football and Camogie on the rise then? Or yeah, definitely um, the Camogie. Anyway, there's been there's just been so much put into the Camogie in the last year. Um, and like the, the talent was always there, but we just never really had a background team that was put together, obviously, to get us up and running. But no, definitely since last year now, there's been so much work put into it and things are flying, thank God, with the Camogie. Yeah, it's good. Yes. Kira, you were uh, nominated for an Ulster Club Ulster, I think it was in 2017. And then uh, Sinead McKenna, your teammate, won one in February. Are you happy for her or is it more that she robbed it from you? <laughs> No, definitely. I'm delighted for McKenna. She she's probably one of the most consistent players we've had at the club for I don't know, like I've been playing senior camogie for six years and she's probably played about one or two bad games in them six years. Like she's one of the most consistent players we have. So when she was awarded the All Stars delighted for her, like so yeah, she definitely deserved it over me anyway. <laughs> Fair like, enough, no yeah. one paid me to say that. No one paid me to say that. I put it out there. <laughs> Brown envelope on the table with 50 quid right there, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Laura, you, uh, you heard of AIT as well? Yeah, I did, that? yeah. Um, I think, it was it 2018? 19. We won, 19, was it 19? Yeah. Um, we, I didn't yeah, play in that game now, but I know when it was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I seen you in the gold, actually. I don't know now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, oh, the college camogie is great. Like, it's such a good way to meet people. Um, you would have met, like, even for there was a girl, Dervla Higgins, that would have played with. I think she's on the Galway panel. Um, and even just play with players like that, like, it's it's brilliant. It's so good to get a taste of players from everywhere, and it really it really does bring you on. Like, you realise the competition that's out there. Um, but yeah, it was great practice that weekend. Oh my god, I think we. <laughs> 
we were out for a week after that. Um, yeah, it was very, really, really good now. It's fair play to you that you remember that you were out for a week anyway. Most, most people <laughs> were chat, uh, I remember been out now, but I don't know. I don't have too much recollection now off the week, but um, <laughs> no, I was good. Yeah, well, it's it's good right. lines, Lauren. <laughs> uh, Neve, after the, the in the twenty eighteen final, you uh, I think you scored three. What were the the scenes like in celebrations at the end in twenty eighteen? Oh Jesus! Like I'm still in shock. Like we robbed that final. Like it was. This is the Ulster final, I presume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we were playing Lucky. Uh, and I remember they had got like two goals or something, like real jammy goals. goals. Mm. Yeah, and um, I'll have to give it a mention now. Kira scored probably one of the best goals I've seen. <laughs> in the corner, it's 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 that. <laughs> um, but no, oh, it was brilliant. Like I still can't believe. It. I remember like all the pictures that uh, the photographers took after or whatever. And like, there's so many that were all just standing there, like, what? Like, did that just happen? Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Especially after like winning it in 2017 was mm. brilliant. But to do it like two years in a row was just class. Um, and the support we had. Uh, that day was unbelievable like because usually you know I wouldn't like pass much remarks but I was like you know the way you wouldn't really hear the crowd especially yeah. games there doesn't be that many people at them anyway but um the, there was a great buzz that weekend because we played on the Saturday in the Ulster final and the men were actually in the senior county final for the first time in years um, on, the, on the Sunday yeah. yeah so um there was kind of a good buzz about it so I think that actually brought a lot more people to our game because everyone was just kind of in great form so um uh, yeah we had a great support at that game I remember just in the last few minutes like it was so tight and like we had far more support than them and that like drove us on so much and I just remember yeah, the, the last uh, ball um, they had like a shot on goal and I remember Annie stuck Annie's a brilliant goalkeeper she stopped and I just remember it so well she stopped it and Aaron got it up or whatever and then Lorraine ended up clearing it out but it was just like there's just no feeling like it. It's just absolutely class. Yeah. I see like, even when you look back at it now and you're like, like we won two ulcers with our club. Like it's yeah. just stuff dreams. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. You remember the when we came back to the town that night? Oh my god, like we walked that cup up through the town and just the support like was just crazy. Like the whole way up the street was just lined and like even like fair play to the lads that weekend, they were Bet, but like they just supported us so much like I remember yeah. being in the pub and it was wedge and just seeing some of the lads with air cup like up on each other's shoulders like you could just tell <laughs> how happy they were for us as well it was yeah really so nice. oh that weekend was just madness I love like, it was actually like a night it was like a sweat I videos on my phone <laughs> and there was lights and the music and the like the whole floor was just packed with people and like Brilliant. you couldn't move in it, but it was the best. It was actually probably one of the best weekends of my life. Like, yeah, it was unbelievable. Gary, you had to get up the fucking Monday morning at six o'clock to get the bus to Dublin. <laughs> I was only leaving Boylands, and yeah. you and you were getting the bus. Well, we heading back to Dublin. To... I was going back to college, so um, I went home. It was probably about five o'clock in the morning. And I left the pub and I went home and I took a shower straight away because, I mean, the pub was a sweat. It was rough. Like, it was <laughs> horrible. And I came back home anyway and, like, I I wasn't fit to take a shower, but somehow I managed. <laughs> and about an hour, I went to sleep for about an hour and I got up and I got on the, the 30 bus to Dublin, the airport bus, and I just looked at the bus driver. I was like, will you drop me off at Whitehall? <laughs> and I had to walk in, walk in from Whitehall into DCU and I was in a physics lab for three hours. I had no voice whatsoever. Like the lecturer was asking questions and I literally was croaking, like not a single word would come yeah. out. <laughs> and for the next three or four days, I had no voice whatsoever, but I, I just about made it through them physics now. I know. Well worth it. 
you're still alive to tell the tale. Yeah, but I managed. I managed. <laughs> yeah, in the in the final leg here, actually, when I think of it, you uh, you were sweeper for like ninety nine percent of the game, and then ah, uh, Kira sweeper every day, so she is. <laughs> And then you went to the front and scored. You scored one one. Kira, say it again. Drop back. <laughs> <laughs> you went ahead then and scored one one in the last couple of minutes. Like, what, did Jimmy Greville yeah, not um, starting your front or something? No. No, I don't know. Like, I, I started the game at number thirteen on my, on my back. That was kind of the the role I played the whole year. So I started mm. either half forward or corner forward, and I dropped it back out to sweeper. And it did not work at all in the first half. Like we conceded no. two goals straight away. Like I was, I was like a deer in headlights. I was useless in the first half. <laughs> and I came to the second half, and I remember um, they were awarded a penalty, and they went for it. Like they, they had no reason to go for the penalty at all. But I remember Annie Smith saved it. And we went up the field straight away, and like we had an attack. And my sister Anya, she. She was put in full forward for some of the, the games that year because she can catch a high ball. Like we that year, we kind of had a tendency of dropping the ball short, so she was landed in there anyway for that sole purpose. And I remember looking up the field, I was still still at sweeper, and I was like, "Oh, he's not in there!" Like, what? <laughs> what are you gonna do if this ball drops short? Oh, he's not in there. I was kind of looking around. I was like, "Who who would go in?" I was like, "Sure, I can only make myself go in." So I kind of pottered up the field anyway and the, the ball just landed nice for me so I ended up catching it and getting the goal but then just from that puck out I think it was we turned them over straight away and it just landed to me again I kind of just pot shot and went over the bar so yeah, yeah. It, was, it, it sounded like the best five minutes in, uh, in Kogi history after, after we went online yeah, the way we, we portray it anyway it is the best five minutes yeah I did a uh, is Jimmy Greville responsible for uh, for a lot of the the with success, or what has he brought to to uh, Chase? Uh, still, Chris Chris Law. Chris Law. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, in fairness, he was very good. Like he came to us in twenty. He was with us for two years. He came to us in twenty seventeen. But it was funny uh, when Jimmy was coming. I think he was either twenty nine or thirty at the time. I can't remember what he was. Probably around. I remember, yeah. like we were told that uh, I think only Aaron and Aisha and Daddy was your person at the time, and he met him. And so he was coming, like for us to meet him. And McKenna had heard he was like twenty. I think he was twenty nine, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh, geez, it's not so bad. Like a young lad coming to train us." And then Jimmy lands in. <laughs> It was it was a bit of a disappointment now for her. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to you send that out to him. Be more of a yeah, for us than um, anything else. So we did. I know Jimmy was brilliant. Like he was just like a father figure to all of us. Like he just he was a great trainer. Now he talk mm. he likes to talk shite now, but yeah. uh, he's yeah, very he he's very good, and he created such a good bond with all of us. Like you know, he had no favorites. Like. Mm. You could literally go to him with anything. And um he always like he was just so he was very approachable, but he was always like he just you knew he was younger, like there was such a good crack with him all the time. Like, you know, it was serious when it had to be, but he was just like brilliant crack, even like on nights out and stuff now. He's not fit to drink. Like that night of the twenty eighteen Ulster final, he can't drink shots at all. And I remember the girls must have fed him with shots and most times everyone had land back to our house. It's kind of like the house party does be yeah. here. And he woke up, uh, he used to always book his room in advance now. He'd be staying in the spare room. <laughs> and he woke up the next morning. I just remember him lying on the couch. He was dying. And sure, he went home and he was meant to uh, come back because the men were playing or whatever. He f- honestly fell asleep for about 24 hours, I'd say. Like he we were all trying to ring him to get him to come down or whatever. So we never we never seen him again then after that. Like. It's funny. He yeah, he's he meant fun. to be the quieter of one of the of the two because uh when the Westmead girls were on Pamela was on Pamela Grammar. Yeah. And uh 
she kind of said and the girls agreed that yeah Johnny is is the lunatic like you know Johnny was interviewed in TG Carr and, get him out for a night out, so. yeah John, Johnny was the one who stood up and said you know when he was asked for a quote he said you won't yeah. get anything Gavin out of me you know <laughs> he's no. the lunatic apparently so <laughs> uh, Jimmy is very good like he was great because he uh most of the time then he wouldn't drink so when we were going on our nights out he'd <laughs> uh he'd usually bring like some of us in or whatever yeah. there did a taxi man come to the dock he'd say he was one... done three or four runs in and out the cabin yeah there was one night uh... <laughs> no Neil don't do it don't do it Dude, yeah yeah there was one night there. coming home from a night out or whatever and myself and Lauren were rotten drunk like <laughs> and <laughs> Jimmy, poor Jimmy, had myself, Lauren, um, my sister, and my mom, and that, that's a, he's overloading. Sorry, Jimmy, now I'm exposing <laughs> him. But uh, yeah, I remember he had to pull in on the, the way home from Cavan, and her Lauren was out in the middle of the road on her hands and knees, getting sick, and Jimmy rubbing her back. I have a picture of it. It is the funniest thing ever. Like he's just oh, and all that. Like he'd love all that crack. Like he's just yeah. so funny. He's in a, he sounds like an all rounder, all right, uh, Lauren. If you he uh, is, yeah. Her, no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, oh god, no, Jimmy. Um, no, Jimmy, he was, he was good. <laughs> Go on, you need to. That, that, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, fairness. Yeah, he sounds uh, that's pretty impressive to know, uh, to know people on such a personal level, like to uh, to be looking out for you when you're, you know. Getting with someone else in in a pub or a nightclub to be that's that's dedication from a manager now you don't you won't laugh from too many of the... no no you wouldn't he's that's one brilliant. of a kind <laughs> he sounds yeah I he's think it... uh, what's uh speaking of, uh, what's been the the best the highlights of nights out in is it Boylands is that your local is it it's, um the name of it is Smith it's Smith isn't it Smith yeah Smith Bar. but it's this um Trisha Curley like she's an old lady she <clears> uh, owns it. And it is the rarest of the rare pubs. Like, it is just right. brilliant. You'd find anything in it. And we do love, like, she lets on that she hates to see us coming in. She does ring the bell when she wants to get rid of us. And uh, <laughs> she, she lets us in and we do go into, in the corner, there's a CD player and sure it's fucked. Like, you can't even hear the music <laughs> on it. But we do love putting on, like, we love a good, well, most of us, except... Evelyn the Miller, we love a good sing song and wolf tones and the whole lot. Oh, yeah. So uh, we did put it on, but she does have cats in the spot. And sure, you, like she oh, hates so when you go near them. She does usually lift the cats and bring them out. But sure, she let she just lets us serve ourselves. Like they're, that night. We go to uh, drop someone home. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> night. <laughs> the cat, a crowd when, of us would walk in. A crowd of us would walk in and Trisha would literally just get up and leave. Like out. there'd be no one, only us in the pub and we'd have to serve ourselves. Like a couple of times Neve and Fauncha O'Reilly was in, in behind the bar and you'd, you'd ask for a vodka and dash or whatever. The measures and were great. You'd get a triple vodka and a little tiny glass and she would be absolutely cut. <laughs> After about <laughs> two drinks, you want me fit to stand. Like, and, like, Oh, it's the funniest thing ever. And then when she's fed up here, you can just hear this wee bell going. Like, she's hanging up on the wall, a wee bell, just ding, ding, <laughs> ding, ding. ding. Like, get out. Night's over kind of job. I think that it's a great job advertising. That weekend, we won the Ulster. And the men were in the county final. Like, it mm. was the like busiest weekend in the town. Mm. And everyone was kind of moving around the pubs together. Mm. And everyone packed. Like, it's, it's a very small pub and mm. it's kind of attached onto her house. So the smoking area is her sitting room. And uh, <laughs> she, it was wedged. You could not move in it. And she just upped and left. And like, there's no one to serve. <laughs> so it was two, one of uh, two, or two people had to just go in and take over the bar. And to God loved them. They were there for probably like an hour, like serving people because it was just wedged. And she just left. <laughs> I don't know where she went. She's your good, uh, good She's promoters a... of tourism anyway for the for the town. That's for sure. I uh, know yeah, that's it. Jimmy um, actually it? said Jimmy is like I tell everyone about this pub. It is just you just have to go to it. It's just brilliant. You have to go to it. She's little ornaments and like 
Duck. Duck, ducks and duck, duck. foxes and little pieces of Christmas decorations up in the middle of summer, this kind of crack. And every brilliant. night we go in, we do steal the duck out of it. Sinead McKenna is the biggest culprit for this. She is an obsession. And Trisha will be going mad. And Sinead's here walking out with this duck under her arm, <laughs> pretending to feed a drink the odd time. And Trisha will be like, come back, it's a freaking duck, come back. Like, Don't worry, Trisha, we'll have it back in an hour. Like, we do drop it back, though. She was practicing, she was practicing for the All Star, was she? She's she robbing the duck as practice for lifting up the All Star trophy, was it? <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what was like. them at this stage. <clears throat> yeah. What was, uh, speaking of All Stars and stuff, what, uh, Lauren, what's your highlight been in the Camogie career so far in general? Um, oh, God. What would it have been? Or if you have a couple, even. <clears throat> um, my highlight would probably have been that All Star weekend. I have a few, I'd say. Um, I remember when we won the college final. Um, mm. I remember us <clears> coming back <throat> on the bus, but our um, manager at the time was pregnant. She was actually like nearly due, so she couldn't right. come down to Cork with us. So we had planned to go and meet her in Supermax and Galway. And I just remember going in and everyone was just on such a high. And sure, you had plastic cup, the Supermax cups just full of vodka and <laughs> Everyone, like, the place was wedged and us all just up on the chairs dancing and singing and just everyone looking at us. And, oh, my God. I actually, it, it's it's so embarrassing to look back at them. But um, that was definitely one of them. Um, oh, God, there's so many. Um, I think just any of the county final nights yeah. were just brilliant <clears throat> at, in the pubs. Like, they were just, just so good. Mm. That sounds good, yeah. And then, Eve, what about you? What's been the career kind of highlights, I suppose, I should say? Um, me and Kira got a college all star uh, in our leaving cert years. That, like, on a personal level, that was yeah, nice to get. But um, we took the leaving cert very seriously. So we, did, yeah. <laughs> we actually we had to play a final in the middle of our leaving cert, and we were bad enough for studying. But Jesus, that just made us even worse but we won so it was all right that's the, that's um, the, the <laughs> Ulster quarter final 2017 against Graymore like we all oh. just this is get a one game that even over the Ulster finals we just all always talk about it. like on anytime we're all together like this is just a game that we talk about and all of us always talk about um great we we're playing Graymore from Armagh up in Graymore and um I'd say we were probably getting bet by six or seven points with a few minutes to go. Eight and we points, back, ten minutes to go. Was it? Yeah, and we came back and yeah. won it. And oh, I swear to God, if I could bottle a feeling, it was just amazing. And they were disgusted because they obviously thought, oh, Cav and team coming up, sure. Yes, throw all the worth a shite. Yeah. But oh my God, like we do, we always talk about it. It, it was just absolutely classic I've no words for it like even atop the winning the Ulster final I don't know what it was but I think it was just like <laughs> one of our Amy McFeety at the time she actually ran into Sinead McKenna and pulled her hamstring or something first half she had to go off yeah she went off but I remember just even the game like from the start like we were shite in the first half I remember McKenna got a free in like the first five minutes like a 30 metre free and went for goal and we were like what are you at like it was just like everyone I don't know if it was nerves I don't know what it was but I remember going in at half time and like we were at obviously um I actually remember Jimmy I nearly ate, cried at half time in that yeah. game I oh, right. ate Jimmy Gravel out of that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. The tensions were so high. And uh, then, obviously, the winning that after, like, it was just absolutely class. And then mm. to go on, like, I think just every Ulster game is a highlight. Like, because mm. just in Cavan, like, just the games don't be great. Like, the championship finals, there might be some, like, good games. But, like, rarely. They just, I don't know, I don't know what it is but they just like this I don't just know if it's the standard or what but I think it's just you're playing the same team over and over again yeah. really so any Ulster game that you go and play like just absolutely brilliant I remember the one after that as well the semi-final we played I can't remember the name of the team Derry Lahan actually it was Derry Lahan, we, we were Derry in Lahan. the 
football Ulster that year as well. So we mm. had to play on the Saturday and the Sunday. And on the Saturday, we played the football. And then the men played um, the Adrian Donahoe. Adrian and uh, so the pitch come Sunday wasn't shite. Oh, yeah. And I remember it was real tight in the mm. last like minute or two. And this girl, she was unbelievable, Derry Lahan, I can't remember her name, but she was like running in on goal and she fell over a big thing of muck. <laughs> and that, we were like, thank God for that. Um, yeah, all the Ulster games, any of the <clears throat> championship finals. Last year actually was. A really, really sweet one, to be honest. So it was our yeah, that was awesome. because people were kind of like, oh, Crystal, you know, people are going to catch up on them. And like, in fairness to the girls, like I was playing as well, but like the girls put on an absolute masterpiece. Like it was just unbelievable. Or the Tom got just... player of the match that game, and I actually think you could have gave it to any single one of us on the yeah, field that day. Every like Tom obviously deserved it. Like everyone deserved that. Like I, I don't know how they ended up picking it because you could have had fifteen Crystal players in the half for for player of the match that day. Like it was it's unbelievable. It's a good sign, though, isn't it? That uh, when it's so hard to choose one out of like yeah. a group, it's always a good sign. You've you've definitely done something right if that's the case. Yeah. That's and then the last one, it'd have to be yeah, coming on, yeah. home from the Ulster finals on the bus, like just because we all love a good sing song. So it'd just be brilliant. And we the two finals we'd stop in uh coming through Cavendish, just Butler's Bridge. Uh, oh, yeah. they have uh, in Con Smith. And it'd be nice just for us to kind of like sit with each other before mm. like, like you go into town. Because you know that everyone kind of goes a separate ways to talk yeah. to people. So it was lovely like to we'd went there for the two years and like just the whole buzz and excitement of it was brilliant. Like it's just class. That's class, yeah. Secure review any uh anyone's tad to it. Um what have you written down in your notes there? Like, <laughs> just how long a second. Me, 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 me. <laughs> me. You know, my... it's like Lauren and me have definitely <laughs> like basically summed every good memory have up there, but uh, definitely the twenty eighteen Ulster final, like and and the Grain Moore game. I think after them two games, like we just have this belief that we can nearly do anything. Like it was two games we were ten or eight points down about ten minutes to go, like and we came back and won the games by a point or two. And like after them two games, I think if we just even if the chips are down, we still believe in the back of our mind that we can come back and win that game. Like whatever game it is, we always believe that we're never bet until the final whistle goes, kind of thing. Yeah. But definitely yeah. that's the final. Like I remember after when the final whistle blew, Cara O'Reilly, Neil's little sister, came out and she nearly flattened me on the field. She literally There's a class her. picture of Kira. There's about five or six Four people running towards her. She was me. after scoring the goal. So, you know, everyone's yeah. like, Oh my god. And there's an unbelievable picture. Everyone's like nearly knocking you. Like even all them pictures, like to look back yeah. on, like they're unbelievable just to think that I we still have done that. It's That's kind that. of vain, but uh, I have them all on my phone. And if I ever <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of be like you, if I ever feel down or at, I'll just flick through the pictures. And there's a picture actually, and it's kind of a weird one to have, maybe. But it's a picture of Evelyn Miller's daughter, Kira. She's probably only eight or nine at the time, and it was obviously the last five minutes or so. Just from flicking through the like. <laughs> Order of the pictures, you'd know when, like when the picture was taken. But she's up on the fence, and she's nearly falling across it, like cheering <laughs> us all and kind of thing. She's absolutely like she. I remember being eight and nine at football matches. I was probably kicking a football in the corner, not knowing what was going yeah. on in the field. <laughs> and here's like this one, Kira, just nearly falling across, trying to egg us on, and that kind of just sums up the whole Crystal support, but. I remember when that final whistle went and everyone came out and then when they move on to the next players, Jimmy just came out to me and he just grabbed my head. The two of us were nearly just looking at each other with tears streaming down our face, like in disbelief of what was after happening. Like we couldn't get over, we just won that game. And that's something that will definitely stick with me. Like 
for yeah. another while. Yeah. Yeah. That's class, yeah. So, you've, uh, yeah. Class, yeah. so many memories, it's deadly, yeah, of, uh, of all the games. I'm, I'd say if I'd say if we're here for a few hours now, you'd probably come up with some more uh, some more class yeah. stories as well. But uh, can any of you think uh, offhand who will be the toughest person you've ever marked in a game? Or who will be the tough ones? I got roasted by Leanne Donnelly there. <laughs> Right, she'll put her down. So, oh my one. god, she was class, absolutely <laughs> really? roasted. The one game that I play in the telly, absolutely roasted. She was just, she was class. <laughs> Is it a sour question to ask what she score yeah. off your? Well, <laughs> she only scored three she points. I think. Did she score four? But her sister scored thirteen points, didn't she? Kira Donnelly. Kira Donnelly scored thirteen. I think and Leanne I think Leanne scored 10. eleven. But Leanne probably set up most of Kira's <clears throat> scores. Right. Okay. Bad day. Bad day. The oxygen. Right, or next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what about uh, Bobby, uh, Lauren, or Kira? Can you think of any? Um. Jeez. I I only remember actually Mark and Roshan O'Keefe once in in a real game, but um, God, I dread seeing her come in a training game. It's like she's just. She's so agile, like she'd be there talking to him, and you think you're having the crap with her, and then you look back again, and she's just gone. Like she's, <laughs> she's just so fast, and she's just full of skill. Like I hate, yeah. I absolutely hate marking her, but um, you can nearly just sit back and watch her all day. Um, well, I'd be happy enough doing that, yeah. <laughs> anytime I see her coming, that sounds good. Kira, what about you? If anyone in particular you can remember, get your notes out there again. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I'm gonna to have to say that one person I absolutely hate marking is Neo. <laughs> oh, right. I used to have to, I used to mark her in school for the crack, like and I, there's a picture it's that goes around. Any time Neo wins something or does something good or it's like coming up to the All Ireland final day, or, like it's this picture that's posted and it's. Belgium stuff versus Breffney and you can just Neo's on the ball and you can just see her outstretched hurling hand and this hand on the far end of the hurl pulling it out of her hand. <laughs> but like no, he, me and Neil play never used to be on the same team in training or anything. And then we used to pull us under pull each other asunder. So yeah, the probably one of those out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely bit shine out of each other so yeah I don't like Mark and Neo for that for that reason but yeah I have to say Roshan as well she okay. just dances around the field like uh, coming up to the All-Ireland final there we were training and we had a full on training day in Breffney and <laughs> I was centre back and Roshan was centre forward and the girls in my team nearly killed me because I just couldn't mark her. Like I was just. You have to stand beside us and mark them, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not two meters away, no. No, no. no. on the pitch it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that actually because no, uh, when I duked our lads on the the lad that I I'd be most friendly with on it. Um, when we were in the quick fire round at the end, if, if you're happy to have a go, one of the questions was about sweepers. And when it came to him, the question wasn't whether he preferred a sweeper or no sweeper. The rest of the lads were arguing over how many sweepers were needed to cover. Oh, yeah, it was six or seven sweepers. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, I might I might ask you that one as well at the end. Uh, the, sec- the second last thing I want to ask you for the quick fire round, uh, and I, I don't know, I have a feeling I kind of know where this answer is going, but out of three of you, who'd be most likely to break a hurl off somebody else? Apart from Neve's mother, uh, obviously, Neil. but <laughs> I say Neve, yeah, definitely. Okay. Neve didn't answer, and she's been sat there Neil waiting. Is terrifying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Our our minor football team from we'd be fairly close, like still. <laughs> Neve's gonna hate me for the in this. Where it was Halloween a couple of years back, we're after playing a minor football game. And we went back to one of the girls' houses just for pizza and watch films and we stayed the night and I say it was about three o'clock in the morning, we're just talking absolute muck. <laughs> and someone pipes up, You know what? When I was younger, I was terrified of Neil Riley. <laughs> and every single one of us in the room knocked around and was like so was I. <laughs> we don't know why, but we're all terrified. I'm smaller than me. The <laughs> that sounds like a good therapy session more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, the last one I've asked you, I'll do the quick fire round then. Uh, Neve, have you ever won it in the club lotto? 
vital question. <laughs> I have actually. But oh, you're the I first. Don't... Yeah. Um, mom and dad do pay for it though. We don't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> they do just the Riley sisters. So right. they do just pay for it. Like it's like a direct debit every every week. So I have one a few times. Yeah. It's just oh. 40 euro. Like, which are... I don't think I ever got it though. I'd say they'd probably get it. <laughs> Fair than nothing because everyone I've asked so far. Fair uh, than nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. The highlight has been uh, two of the lads won the best seller in the club. That's all they've ever won. They never, nobody's ever won it on the club lot yet. So you're the first. So uh, that's that's class. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, what about you? you? Ever won it on the club lot? I actually did. Um, I hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm Rigged. actually pretty Everyone lucky. Should enter though. the personal lotto. I, <laughs> that, yeah. Stakes of winning it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I I'd be pretty lucky. I remember, I, what was it last year? Or the year before, I won like two iRadio competitions and then like an iRadio competition online or something. I think I ended up winning like three different sets of tickets in the one year. So I in have started doing weeks. a lot of but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I'm just waiting to win the lotto now. It's the next thing, the big one. Well, you can get in line. We're all waiting for that. So, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Kira, to make it a hat trick, how much have you won in the lotto? I should ask. I you have not. Why you take it that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just get your parents to buy it, so you can't really speak now. <laughs> uh, no, my sister, my sister used to sell them and. Whoever, like, to, just to the neighbours around, and if the one, like, the money would come to our house, and then she'd have to drop it down there. But that was the closest I've ever come to that 40 euro. <laughs> it, it did go down to the neighbours now. We never kept it. We're, okay. we're honest like that, you know. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I'm sure the neighbours can vouch when I ring them up anyway after this. So. <laughs> They're wondering where their 40 euro went. To. <laughs> Yeah, they'd be still wondering right there. So, uh, yeah, if you're happy enough to have a go at the uh, the quick fire round, uh, I'll do it individually. They're just a uh, few yeah. random GA questions. This kind of first thing that comes into your head in some way. So, um, I suppose I started. Neve, you're the first person to ask the question. Just so, Kira, I'm going to go to you first. So, for this, put the pressure on you. And then uh, Lauren and Neve have uh, had the advantage because they'll hear the questions. So, <coughs> now, I thought that would be helpful. And then with the Uctor Ard lads, by the time I got around to Paddy, who was last, he'd forgotten all the questions. So, <laughs> it mightn't be that useful. So, we'll see how it goes. So, Kira, what's your favourite ground you've ever played on? Dr. Blanca Park in Kilnadark. I, so, I love it. Right. Uh, the That's worst, a tough ground. <laughs> least favourite ground you've ever played on? Rat Ludden and Kill. Okay. bog it's yeah <laughs> a bog we'll take that the, uh, we've lost letters in that field so we have <laughs> in the field itself okay uh your favorite in travel, the field. favorite travel destination or favorite holiday you've ever been on i don't go on too many of them but dublin, uh, dublin yeah, <laughs> on the bus yes yeah. <laughs> jeez i don't know um I've only been to England or Belgium, so I'd say Belgium because it's warmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you be more uh, short pass or drive it long? Not pass at all. Uh, <laughs> don't option, pass, option no. C. Option C, don't pass um, at all, yeah. Snake coil would definitely give out to me a good bit for hand passing the ball in the back line, so probably short pass. <laughs> Not like snake coil. Nice no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a supporter, would you prefer uh, the tea and the ham sandwiches before the game or the pub before the game? Tea. Tea, tea. definitely. Yeah. Uh, you, have choice, <laughs> you have a choice of one here. You can pick the hats, flags, scarves or headbands. 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 That's uh, That might be a first. Uh, are, you the, are you the Marty Party or Des Cahill? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be as much crack as Martin now, so I'd say Des. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who's your favourite pundit on telly? Any sport? I I I have to say, I actually love the controversy that Joe Brawley brings to the pundit. So yeah, yeah and to him. Good stuff. Um, if you had a choice of a manager, even though Jimmy is obviously irreplaceable, and you had a choice of either the Downey sisters in Kilkenny or Brian Cody. From Kilkenny, who would you take? The Downies. Okay. Yeah, I'd have to go with them. Okay. Uh, what's the funniest or worst thing that's ever been shouted at you from the sideline by anybody? <laughs> that includes Jimmy. <laughs> uh, 
that was the pass. It was a it was a shot, definitely. Jimmy <laughs> shouted that in at me in my first game under him. Oh, okay, like that. Uh, uh, there's a bit of a story to that now, but we'll leave that, maybe. <laughs> uh, you sound like you want to sell it, though, do you? No, no, no. No, okay. No, it's okay. all right. We'll come back to that after. Uh, if there was a GA transfer market in the morning, who'd be the one player you'd bring in for your county? You'd be careful this one now so that you don't, you know, you're not replacing one of your friends here. So I think we're looking for a win back, though. She didn't do too good in the All-Ireland final there, so <laughs> care of the Neo, but I don't know who I'd bring in. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't get rid of Neo. Um, I would. <laughs> Katie Power. Uh, okay. She's just, yeah. Class, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, who's the best uh, hurl maker? Um, I don't know what brand I use, but I love Sean Riley gets them into the club, so I have to say them. <laughs> Sean Riley's hurls. I don't That'll know where the hell he gets them, but I love them. I can't we'll go away from them. We'll ask him after. So, uh, studs or molds? <laughs> molds. Molds. Sweeper, no sweeper, or how many sweepers? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Only a sweeper if it's hard. I'd say sweeper. sweeper. No, I actually don't. I, it doesn't really bother me now, to be honest. But yeah. I'll, I'll say sweeper because I've kind of been given that role a good yeah. bit. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and uh, your favourite sport outside of the GAA? I don't know. Um, I really like watching American football. I don't watch it when it's live. I watch the Facebook videos. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I don't understand it all that much either. But I just like watching all the. Okay, and uh, last last one then in your lifetime, who's been the best GA player in your lifetime? That's a tough one. You can't say yourself. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying. To say. <laughs> I can go. I can come back to you if you want. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot. There is a lot. Okay, I'll come back to you. Know, you. you can think yeah, for a few minutes. Come back I'll come back to you. Back to you. Brand, uh, Lauren, same things. The favorite ground. Um. Oh, probably Drummley pitch in Cavan. Okay. Least favourite ground? Has to be the bad pitch in Breffney. Oh, my God. <laughs> the lighting in there is dreadful. <laughs> oh, uh, favourite travel destination, favourite holiday? Um, Kerry. Kerry, spot. Uh, yeah. Shore pass or drive it long? Drive it long. Drive it long. Uh, as a supporter, the tea and ham sandwiches or the pub beforehand? Uh... Probably the pub. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the choice of one here, the hats, flags, scarves, or headbands. <clears throat> oh, scarf. Scarf, okay. Uh, Marty or Des? Marty. Marty. Uh, your favourite pundit on the telly? Any sport? Jesus, I actually don't know any. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> pass. Pass. Yeah, you can pass. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you could replace uh, Jimmy Greville and you have a choice of uh, Angela and Ann Downey or Brian Cody, who would you take? Oh, Brian Cody. Brian Cody. Um, funniest thing ever shouted or worst thing ever shouted at you from the sideline? Get your head out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'll take that one. Uh, if it was a GA transfer market in the morning, who would you buy in for your county? There's a sweeper that needs replacing. I think she's got her notebook out there. <laughs> Um, who would I bring in? Probably Dervla Higgins, Gola. Good stuff, yeah. Uh, best hurl maker. Who's your favorite hurl maker? Is this another Sean O'Reilly brings? Oh, Sean! Shot, yeah. shot. You're not allowed to say cool tech, Lauren. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's no. all right. Uh, studs or molds? Uh, molds. Molds. Uh, sweeper or no sweeper? If the sweeper isn't Kira Finnegan. <laughs> um. <laughs> No sweeper. No sweeper. Okay. Uh, That's me out of the team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite favorite sport outside of the GAA. Um. Can't this, pick long, uh, long for hurling. Can't be your favorite sport either, or long for football. Long for hurling. <laughs> doesn't exist. Long for don't. Long for don't have uh, Pulling out the only. Know, yeah. Um. The the gym probably. Stuff. If that's uh, a sport, yeah, uh, that's good enough. And favorite, or sorry, best player in the GA in your lifetime, probably Roshan O'Keefe. Roshan O'Keefe, okay, very good, right, yeah, lovely. And uh, Neve, and then I'll go back and ask uh, Kira the million dollar question at the end. Then, uh, <laughs> Neve, your, your, about that. <laughs> Neve, your favorite ground, um, I love our home pitch, but I love playing on Breffney when we're let on it. I, I, I hate Breffney for many reasons, um, mostly. Yeah. 
11 or 12. My cousin was playing in the All Ireland Club final with Gary Castle against Cross McGlenn in a replay. And by the time we got in, uh, the game was over uh, because there was 10 minutes gone and they were already like miles behind. And it was the traffic getting into Breffney was the problem. So, oh, it's a disaster yeah. there. Yeah. It's a disaster. Yeah. Uh, it's a lovely well, pitch, though. Yeah, it looks nice in fairness. Um, what's your least favourite ground then? Which of the bogs are you picking? <clears throat> It'd be Kill as well. Right. Good it's stuff. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favourite holiday or favourite travel destination? Uh, New York. Class. Uh, short pass or drive it long? Drive it long. Really? Uh, the tea and ham sandwiches <laughs> or the pre match pub? Tea and ham sandwiches. Uh, hats, flags, scarves or headbands? Headbands. Deadly. Uh, Marty or Des? Uh, Marty. Marty, okay. Uh, your favourite pundit on telly in any sport? Uh, John Milan. He's John Milan. just class. Loves me county. Uh, Pure passion. Pure passion, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you could replace Jimmy Greville with Angela Ann Downey or Brian Cody, who would you take? Uh, Brian Cody, I'd say. Okay. Uh, funniest or worst thing ever shout at you from the sideline? Probably won't be able to repeat what, what I've been called, I'd say. <laughs> I'm sure we all know. No, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure I've probably been told in football to get out of the way in the forward line, probably okay. by Kira. <laughs> Take that. So yeah. Um, if there was a GA transfer market, who would you bring in for the county? Replacing Kira, um, I'd say probably. Kira Donnelly, she's class. Lovely. Uh, best hurl maker. Sean Riley, whoever he gets, yeah. <laughs> That is my father. Okay. He gets the six. Right. I don't know where he gets them. It's some. I actually. I feel like it might be a fella in Offaly, but I actually. I don't know. But I heard yeah, that too. Yeah, I. Uh, I love them six. Well, they're love class. It. Probably one of the dualies down there. I'd say uh, studs. Or sorry, yeah, studs or moles. Moles. <clears throat> moles. Uh, how many sweepers to help Kira Finnegan? <gasps> well, the rest of the back will be Mark and her player for her, so. Uh, <laughs> I'd say you just need Aaron time. Galligan on the field to do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, see. And uh, favorite sport outside of the GA? I love watching rugby, but I like don't really. I don't know fully the rules. Like sometimes I like I love watching it, but I'd be sitting there like, why is that happening? <laughs> yeah. But I do really. I enjoy it though. Deadly. And uh, best GA player ever in your lifetime? Um, TJ Reid. Class. And. Kira Finnegan, you've been Googling away on your phone there. What names have you come up with? <laughs> See, I was going to say Russian O'Keefe, but I didn't want to give it to her because she broke my nose last year. Jeez, so, okay. um, <laughs> um, I'd say Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly, okay. That's uh, three good choices, yeah. Um, lads, look, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I've, uh, I'm sorry for taking up half your night, but you're just, you're such good crack. I couldn't, I couldn't let you go. Like, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the best of luck with uh, uh, Chris or Law. Uh, go forward. <laughs> and, yeah. An hour later and you still can't see it. Ah, shut up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I tried my best, all right? If you were here on time, you would have heard my brilliant pronunciation at the start. So. Look, the Wi-Fi's not great in Calvin. We all know that. Uh, yeah, they all, they all say that, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no seriously, thanks so much to Trevi. Um, I'll give the Trevi a shout before it's going out. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to edit things out of it, so yeah, if you want to edit it out, that's grand. I can uh, I can edit out. Um, yeah, but look, it's been class, and thanks so much for coming on. And uh, if, best of luck when the GA eventually gets going again. Which uh, Kira's taking notes there, so I'm sure she'd looked up when it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying uh, to learn how to be a sweeper. I've been at it for three years. I still don't know. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Apparently, we're if you've any tips, send them on. Yeah, we're replacing you anyway by the sounds of it, so don't worry about it. You don't need to know. Anyway. So, yeah, look, lads, I'll, uh, I'll let you go, and uh, thanks so much for coming on. You're here. Thanks a million for having Thank us. Thank you. Thanks for inviting okay. us on. It was yeah. great crack. It? Sound. I'll chat Something to you after. Something different to do during <laughs> lockdown. Know, no, more, no more than myself as well. So, uh, yeah, look, I'll chat to you this after. Anyway. Yeah, thanks Mike, very thanks much. Thanks, Take it thanks. easy. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Coming up next week on the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, we cut into our next slice. But then your man had me gone, and just referee just looked and didn't do anything about it. And my dad just kind of grabbed your man off me, put a hole in his hand. <laughs> and then everyone just kicking in then. You know the way, you know one yeah. lad jumps in. Every minute. Went on for about five or ten minutes then. Yeah, but, um, true hurling. Coming up on Slice 13 next week of the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, 
I'm thrilled to have the chats and the crack with a GA name that has become widely known. From Iraq to Leitrim to Dublin to the Tommy Tiernan show, Zach Moradi is no stranger to changes in his life. We chat about his memories of life in Iraq and being born during Operation Desert Storm, interesting early encounters with Garda Kniff in Leitrim, his father being a true hurling fan, being an All-Ireland and All-Star winner, his real name Samako being changed, playing hurling in Tala, and finding out what he won on the club lotto. That and much, much more. Don't miss the chats with the legend and GA icon himself, Zach Moradi. Until next week, take your points and your goals will come. Slonagy.